The Federal Reserve is poised to spray trillions of dollars into the U.S. economy once a massive aid package to fight the virus, and its aftershocks are signed into law. These actions are unprecedented, going beyond anything we did during the 2008 financial crisis in a sign of the extraordinary challenge facing the nation. The U.S. government was already running massive budget deficits long before the pandemic, and the debt was piling up at a dizzying pace. Government spending is soaring. The U.S. national debt pushed above $24 trillion. That's a $4 trillion increase in the debt since Trump took office. The U.S. government added $1 trillion to the national debt in just six months. Trump, instead of draining the swamp, he is draining the nation. This is theft in broad daylight. Nothing more than a large wealth transfer mechanism for the rich and the connected. Spending billions of dollars in subsidies to farmers to bail them out from tariffs imposed on Americans, our dear president thinks China is paying. Spending billions in corporate welfare from every wing of government under the false premise that it will produce American jobs when the money is really funneled to stock buybacks and CEO bonuses. The U.S. debt already stands at around 106.9% of GDP. Ever since the U.S. national debt exceeded 90% of GDP in 2010, inflation-adjusted average GDP growth has been 33% below the average from 1960 to 2009, a period that included eight recessions. The U.S. is now acting like a giant corporation and treats its constitution as corporate by laws. The deficit will be $26 trillion and a central bank with $10 trillion on its balance sheet this time next year with a dead economy. What country in its right mind would still accept the U.S. dollar for their products or resources? Oh, and our oil is too expensive to export, and many of our major industries suck, like aircraft and weapons manufacturing. I know, I know, we have Facebook. Our universities graduate socialized snowflakes that have no initiative. The USA needs decades to retool. If U.S. debt and the Fed balance sheet don't matter, why do we pay taxes? Just sell treasuries to the Fed for the whole enchilada and leave us serfs alone. It won't matter how many trillions they throw in. No amount of trillions will fill a bottomless pit. Doesn't the Fed understand the tsunami of derivative debt? There is no bottom. The derivatives pit is bottomless. America is financially doomed. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. Shortly after 4 p.m. on Friday, President Trump signed into law the $2 trillion fiscal stimulus also known as the CARES Act, which gives the Fed the ammunition to issue up to $4.5 trillion in additional debt, a multi-trillion dollar helicopter credit drop as Bloomberg called it. Out of the $2 trillion, only $290 billion is meant for direct payments to families, which, as a reminder, was the whole point of the bill. The elite are happy that you are not in charge. Two trillions of insanity. Other than the direct payments, none of this money can be spent, used if the majority of the workforce is sitting at home. If that's true, then what's the point of the program? Solvency of the owners. Debts imploding does wonder to leverage balance sheets. The point of the program is so that the plebs can pay the rentier class. Sorry, no one is bailing out you and me. These are dollars of nothing that are created by typing in numbers on a keyboard and pressing send or enter. Let these numbers of nothing be created, and soon enough, the fake currency system will collapse. Fiat money never lasts. A dollar and a pound and a shekel have one thing in common. They are a measurement of something. If you go to the store and say you want a gallon, what do you think the store clerk would say? A gallon of what? Milk, water, or juice. A dollar is a unit of measurement. That is all. So a dollar of silver, used to be called a silver dollar, describes how much of something. We have no choice but to eliminate the Federal Reserve and use silver and gold as currency. The Fed is making it up as it continues to do anything possible to prop the system up a little longer for its bank shareholders, the globalist, elites. First, Bernanke assured us that he was not monetizing debt because the increase in the Fed balance sheet was only temporary. When that became obvious as complete falsification, they reverted to MMT because it doesn't matter how much money government prints, restricted only by hyperinflation. Already they have had to accept that the dollar will have to be sacrificed, which, together with Russia's assistance in the oil market, mocks the end of the exorbitant privilege of the reserve currency and foreigner interest in buying U.S. treasuries, replaced by direct Fed monetization of debt. Sorry, I meant to say replaced by MMT. 
They're running out of games to play. So hyperinflation is the real end game. It comes after a deflationary depression. MMT, helicopter money, stimulus package. Not long ago, we looked at this kind of quackery as lunatic fringe leftist socialism. Well, here it is today, and all I hear is gimme my money. Enjoy your 1200 bucks or whatever is your rights and liberties, and overall financial picture melt away for the enrichment of our overlords. The banksters are absconding with trillions, but once we accept the $1,200 table scraps, we then become complicit and have no recourse. They are either going to end cash or print it into worthlessness. They will, of course, push everyone into the digital money. The only way to escape their system is to stop using it. We can use our own system. There are no citizens anymore. You are either a debt slave, a brainwashed consumer, or if you refuse those dictates an enemy of the state. Human capital is the property of the capitalist. Slaves are human capital. Where is the actual value coming from? It's not coming from the Fed. The Fed doesn't produce anything. It's not coming from the government for the same reason. It's coming from you. It's your labor, your time, and energy that is being given as corporate welfare, and you are getting a $1,200 consolation prize in return. Unfortunately, we as a nation are going to have to undergo an unprecedented bout of suffering before the great masses are forced to learn and discern the reasons for their plight, and more importantly, WHO brought it all about. At this very moment, those eternal culprits are planning their next move. That is, a segue into an all-digital currency. They are going to use it as a convenient excuse for the uncleanliness of paper currency. If this is sold to the herd, then their worries are over. They can spend and inflate currency at will. They will also be in charge of everyone's digital accounts. All of this was actually in Nancy Pelosi's bill. And in case anyone still hasn't figured it out, the whole Republican-Democrat split of the population in two rival camps is nothing more than theater meant to distract while those in control loot not only the here and now, but also rob the future generations blind. Because the sad truth is that behind the fake veneer of either progressive ideals of conservative values, politicians on both sides have one simple directive, to perpetuate the broken status quo for as long as humanly possible and get as rich as possible in the process. The two-party system is proving to be an abject failure in the US. In reality, our choice in 2016 was between crooked Hillary and crony capitalist Don. Some choice. Now, our choice in 2020 will most likely be between crony capitalist Don and brain-dead Joe. People who think POTUS is out to end the Fed are delusional. He is ecstatic with their actions, and he wanted ZIRP, NIRP and QE even before COVID-19 came along. How many times did he ask for more intervention from the Fed, and that was before the first case of COVID-19 was reported in the US? Politicians on both sides have one simple directive, to perpetuate the broken status quo and get as rich as possible in the process. If the majority of sheeple are too stupid to notice or to prevent this, then I don't see why not. Life is basically the evil preying on stupid. And, it is so hard to convince people of that one, simple fact. Republican, Democrat are different spellings of the same thing. Next fall, fire them all. Prices are, over time, set by what the market will bear. Multiply the amount of money in people's pockets by five, but keep the number of goodies to buy the same, and over time sellers learn they can charge about five times what they used to. In some ways, the sellers are forced to charge more, because all of the things they want to buy costing five times more. Printing money also destroys people's savings. Worked for most of your life to save 10 years earnings for your retirement? The last thing you want is for somebody with a printer to explode world cash and turn your 10-year savings into the equivalent of a coin jar. Stable currency value, the ability to save without the risk of being pilfered by your own government, should be every citizen's birthright. Parable, you can print tons of money, but that doesn't double the yield of crops, provide a massive number of exotic sports cars, or manufacture more beachfront homes. And the sometimes stealthy, sometimes brutal erosion of the value of our money is nothing less than government-directed theft. Theft that ultimately puts large portions of the population in a state where, tada, the government is forced to step in and provided for the day-to-day -day needs of the poor masses. Which their monetary policies pretty much created. 
The fact of the matter is a real free market solution destroying millions of businesses and putting millions of people out of jobs would have laid the foundation for a new renaissance in the USA economically, socially, and culturally. The USA would have emerged from this disaster as a new competitive force in the world and told China to suck it. Yes, it would have been the greatest redistribution of wealth in the history of economics. It would have been the phoenix rising before there are ashes. It would have been the total renewal of the USA. Instead, these dumbasses are so intent on protecting the status quo that they have destroyed the USA through the back door and told the American people they are only worth 1200 bucks to get pissed on their heads. The Fed lends to the US government by buying treasuries and lends to public banks by extending credit in the open market. Interest must be paid on that debt. Since there is always more debt than money in the economy, it can't all be repaid without borrowing more. The system is designed this way. It's a more sophisticated form of enslavement. The public debt is never going to be paid down. While the sheeple were fighting over toilet paper, the overlords are bickering over trillions. It's a big club and you ain't in it. The ability to take advantage of all this debt is definitely a club very few are in. This was the Atlantis report. Please like, share, subscribe, and please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy.